Good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua Gilliland. I am the chairman of the Sea Scout Marketing Subcommittee. I'm also the Western Region VP for the high school age programs and career programs. And it's a pleasure to have you with us this evening to talk about scuba in your Sea Scout ship. Our guest speaker tonight is Skipper Kathy Wadig from Lake Havasu, Arizona. Her ship does a lot of scuba activities in addition to sailing, and uh, they know how to, how to be our little ship in the desert and building our Arizona Navy that's continuing to expand. So Kathy, how are you tonight? Good, and how are you? Doing well, thank you. So uh, we have people still signing in, but as we're getting everyone into the webinar, I'm gonna launch a quick poll so we can learn a little bit about our attendees. Find out if anyone has done uh, any scuba type courses in the past, such as uh, snorkeling or scuba itself, or maybe uh, open water. And, and of course, none, because we're going to have people who've never done this type of activity before. They're here because they're interested, and that's okay. And we'll let people continue to log in. Because again, it's summertime and a lot of folks are on cruise and having other adventures. So seeing attendees have started responding, I will end the poll and let's talk about the results. Uh, we've had uh, two thirds of our respondees say that they've not taken in any courses. Uh, one person or at least one person has done snorkeling, one scuba, one open water. And let's just launch one of the other polls that we have on tonight. And that is, does your ship have an interest in doing diving activities? And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm assuming that's why you're here tonight. And whether or not your ship currently does any diving activities, because we want folks to know these opportunities exist. We have lots of partnerships. Kathy can, can talk about some of that. And you know, the purpose is to understand what these activities consist of. Uh, so people, you know, it doesn't become aspirational. Uh, it can be practical. You can understand what you would do if your scouts do a scuba course. And we'll let folks continue to answer. And let's just end the poll right now. And no, 100% said that they, they have an interest in scuba but none of them have any diving activities planned yet, and that's okay, because that's why we're here this evening. So Kathy, why don't you take it away and share with us your knowledge and experience with uh, Sea Scouts and scuba diving. Okay, thanks, Josh. So let me just start with, with the scuba ship. I'm gonna talk about a first month uh, overview of what you can do. We're going to talk about um, how you can take that first month and and put apprentice in there and almost complete apprentice except for the time of the three months um, and of course volunteer um, service hours. So let me just start with that and then why a scuba ship? Why would you even consider this? Well first of all when I became a, a Sea Scout skipper that was because of Weeblows and I found out through This Is Scouting online that there was such thing as uh, Sea Scouts. So let me just tell you, so 10 years ago, I didn't even know that Sea Scouts existed. So then once I start, started the ship in the desert with sailboats and powerboats and kayaks and canoes, um, I own a dive shop. I've been a dive instructor for 30 years. Why couldn't we um, implement scuba into Sea Scouts and start scuba Sea Scout ships and then Josh, of course, says, well, there shouldn't be a reason why you can't. So this is what, how we've gotten to this point. So why a scuba ship? If your kids are love above the water, but want to know what's below the surface, sort of below the waterline, as we'd say, if they want to swim with the fish or explore shipwrecks, which we, I do, that's kind of my passion, um, dive in a new environment, um, explore archaeology, which I can talk tons about that too if anyone has any questions about that and caring about the environment we do a lot of underwater cleanups which i had been doing for 15 years here and then incorporated scouting into these underwater cleanups so again i'm going to talk to you about passion as a sea scouter 
and a volunteer, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, we're all volunteers, this is our free time. So if you're not passionate about what you wanna do, um, just follow your heart. That's all I'm gonna tell you with that. These are photographs of me diving, except for the bottom one on the right. Um, that's my son at one of our cleanups for the people that give us our docks for free. We do underwater cleanups for their docks and they give us three slips year round for free. So there's some benefits to, to scuba diving. Uh, the top left is with me uh, training one of my Sea Scouts. Um, on the right is diving in the South Pacific. Me with Sharky, he comes with us on all our trips. That's our 99 cent shark. And then I just came back from a big manta trip in, in um, Mexico. But passion's important. My kids were worried my, my son is going off to college and they thought I was gonna leave the unit because my son is leaving scouts. And I said, I'm doing this because I love this and I wanna teach these kids how amazing the underwater world is. And that's, that's why I'm doing this. So what's the scuba ship look like? Now everyone hopefully online is, is um, BSA so they know how a, how a regular unit would start. So five youth, two adults, the difference in a scuba ship, you want to look for someone that a charter that's interested in scuba. So a dive shop, a dive club, a yacht club, a swim club. Um, I changed our charter. We had started out with an outrigger canoe club, and then we went with our local dive club, which is the perfect match for us because I have more adults and we always are short of adults. Well, I have a whole group of adults that all love to scuba dive. So they are really instrumental in keeping the kids diving when I am out of town or um, we, we don't have other adults. So a question I always get is, can everyone participate in scuba diving? It's fun, it's exciting. People are always like, I, I wanna do this. Well, it's a little bit different than being above the water. People have to be in shape. And in shape meaning that um, they first of all have to be able to put their face into the water. You can be a sailor but not be comfortable in the water. Um, you have to be, have, be able to, to, to fill out and have a physician sign the RSTC BSA scuba health form. Um, and that's the file name for it if you need it. It's usually attached to the medical A, B, and C and if you keep scrolling down, I know that uh, sea base requires it if, if you're um, scuba diving. So it's there. And the reason is, is that the youth can't have, or the adults, usually asthma, uh, type 1 diabetes, um, any kind of airspace problem. So they having a difficulty clearing their ears or having a lung issue. That is, usually excludes you from scuba diving. Another question I always get is cost. Well, we all know what the uniform cost is, it's, you know, roughly pants and shirt, 50 bucks, 75 bucks with patches. Your BSA fees are $35. Your scuba diving certification, depending on your local dive shop or your instructor, is going to range between $200 and $350. I'm going to go kind of jump to scholarship. The first time I did it with my ship, I got a Blue Futures grant from. Um, West Marine, and that covered a almost over $100 per kid, a uh, per Sea Scout to get certified. So there's money out there, you have to look for it. Women Divers Hall of Fame has scholarships. One of my Sea Scout just got one for this year to get advanced diving. Um, uh, we had a local scholarship and two of my Sea Scouts last year got it to cover their whole open water courses and snorkel mask and fins and booties. So they're out there, you just might have to look. Also, Patty offers one for both units and individuals. So that's something you might wanna look at. That's through BSA. Um, equipment. We're gonna talk about equipment that's required. Uh, and we'll talk about a little bit about activities and what kind of travel you might wanna do. When you think about this, this is like with any unit, you wanna know if your activity is gonna be weekly or monthly, um, what kind of activities they're gonna be. Um, underwater cleanups, we do water studies, if you're going to go to sea base and make it a super activity, or any other travel adventures, which I can get into at the end. So your first meeting. Now remember, you're going to try to implement uh, apprentice in this. 
So as you see these, they're kind of ambitious, but you can do them if you have a good um, a grasp of what needs to get done. So your first meeting, you need to do an introduction of the parents and the youth to your charter partner. You need to explain the goals of the ship, and then you need to know what your youth and your adults have that they can bring forward to you. Are they brand new that you're gonna be training them straight out of the box, or do you have experienced divers? Are you gonna be doing local diving? Here in Arizona, we can dive year round. In the winter, it's about 50 degrees of water temperature, and in the summer, the water on the surface is 92 degrees. So we have a wide range of temperatures and visibility. So you have to decide if you can dive locally. You can dive in a quarry, you can dive in a lake, you can dive in the ocean, you can dive in a river. Um, so, and you can dive in a swimming pool. So if you don't have any access to open water, you can do a lot of training in a swimming pool throughout the winter. Mix up your activities. We'll talk, talk about some of that and some kind of super activity with a, like a dive trip. Well, what I always wanna start everyone out with initial training for everybody. So your scouters definitely have to go onto myscouting.org, do the YPT, do uh, Sea Scout leadership tra leader training and do under program safety, safety afloat and swif safe swimming defense. Also, sea badge is always your great next step. I'm doing one, uh, of course, directing one in, in uh, Lake Tahoe, October 18th to 20th. I had to throw that little, little thing in there. Okay, with your Sea Scouts, you, now all these kids have phones. Have them download the Sea Scout manual on their phone, page number two, Sea Scout Promise, and the oath and law are on page two. So it's one to scroll up and they'll get that. Go over the ship organization and uniform, which is the first chapter in your, in your Sea Scout book, and you're good. You've covered a whole bunch of stuff already for apprentice. BSA medical form I would hand out at this, the first meeting. Show them what part A and B, you definitely need that anyway. And part C, if they need um, a doctor's care or if you're gonna do anything over uh, 72 hours. I have my Sea Scouts go to myscouting.org straight out of the box. They have to do safety afloat and safe swimming defense. It covers two different uh, requirements for um, apprentice and able. So it gives them a, their first avenue of online training, which they're much better at it than we are. Um, and, and they also can see additional training that they can get. Your first activity, get them in the water. So I get them into a swimming pool or confined water that's clear through the BSA swim test, which you're one of your requirements for apprentice. Also, it's gonna give you a good indication who can swim, who can swim. Um, is this the program for them? Um, should they take swim lessons before they go further? And then do a skin diving, which is snorkeling for, um, most people would know it as snorkeling. In the industry, we call it skin diving. BSA has a, a book right here like this, and it's called BSA Snorkeling Safety. So if you don't know much about snorkeling, it breaks it all down for you. If you have um, a local dive shop or dive instructor, the first time when I would do, I do this, uh, I'm asked quite often to do snorkeling with Boy Scouts. So I do a night, I bring from the dive shop snorkel mask and fins so that no one has to buy anything. And I take them snorkeling and I show them how to do surface dives and um, how to clear a snorkel and how to clear a mask. And that's a good indication if these kids, if you can bring them further and if they're, um, so if you're not expending money on, on something that maybe they won't follow through on. Uh, um, because you want it to be fun. And if they're not having fun, snorkeling is much harder than scuba diving. So if you've ever gone scuba diving and, I mean, snorkeling and got water in your snorkel and drank half the ocean and said, I'm never doing this again. That's not like that with scuba diving. Scuba diving, you will always get air. As long as you have air in your tank, you will have air and you won't have that, that feeling. Okay, so I, I always have to tell people that because I, I think that a lot of people think, oh, I can't scuba dive. A lot of people also say they can't scuba dive, it's sort of claustrophobic. Uh, if you can go into a small sailboat, uh, if you can clean a head, you can do this, <laughs> you know, because it's not, it's, it's omnidirectional scuba diving. Okay, so you've just done a pool. 
and everyone's having a great time and there are they're ready to go they want to go scuba diving so your second meeting you need to do a little business so this is when you're going to do your ship meeting and with the election of officers and create bylaws and those are also in your sea scout manual go over customs and courtesies that's in that's also in the second chapter then you're going to decide how you're going to schedule this scuba um, class i'll get into this a little bit more later but you can do it on weekends you can do it on weeknights you can do it week long um, I've, I've taught many, many different ways. I've taught all these ways and it, it's going to be whatever fit fits for your unit. The same time when you're at this meeting, start them on uh, Marlin Spike, have them start doing knots because they're going to need them anyway. We don't necessarily use them on scuba diving, but if this is something that they can do, you can always have ropes with you. So when someone starts fidgeting, hand them a rope and make them do something. Okay. So that was the, the again that's going to be one of your uh, apprentice requirements you can get at least get a good start on that okay so let's talk about an open water scuba class it's broken down into three sections a classroom pool and open water so rstc which is a recreational scuba training council basically sets the standards that all the training agencies follow and that's PADI, which is Professional Association of Diving Instructors, NAWI, the National Association of Underwater Instructors, SDI, which is Scuba Diving International, SSI, which is Scuba Schools International, there's INTD, which is International Association of Night Trucks, something, you know, technical divers. There's, there's a bunch of other ones, um, but they all follow the standards that RSTC has set up. So, it suggested a minimum of 20 hours of classroom pool and open water. That's just suggested. When I do it with my Sea Scouts, it's much longer than that because I want to make sure they're comfortable and they're trained. An instructor is allowed to structure it with SDI, that's who I certify with, to structure it any way I want. So I can do more pools, less pools, more open waters, um, I can do the classroom online or home study or a traditional classroom. Sometimes I do a little bit of both, okay, or all three. No, yeah, sometimes I do all three. Pool sessions I'm gonna talk about in a second and I'm gonna talk about the four open water dives, which is a minimum. It's not, you know. So once they get done with a scuba class, what do, what do they get? Well, they can dive in the conditions similar to their, tra their training. So I do training dives in the lake here. In the summer, our visibility is five feet. But if I took them to the ocean, which I'll talk about which I've done, and the visibility is 40 feet, I'm very comfortable that they can dive there. I'd be less comfortable taking someone that's done checkout dives in the Grand Cayman with a 100 foot visibility and then dumping them in the lake without more training. So just kind of keep that in mind of where you're, where you're diving. So you dive in the conditions similar to training. They'll be allowed to dive with other certified divers. Usually when they're under uh, 17, they usually have to be with a guardian, a parent, um, or someone that signed off to dive with them. So that would be usually someone over 18 have to be supervising, which is just like any other leaders. We will always have two leaders there anyway. This is the key when you have kids. They have to demonstrate mature and sound judgment. I, as an instructor, do not have to certify someone just because they've done their four dives and done the requirements. If I don't think that they have mature and sound judgment, that doesn't mean, uh, if they don't have that, that doesn't mean I have to give them a card. I'll work with them until they, they can demonstrate that. They have to complete all open water requirements safely and effectively. They can do those skills in open water or in confined water. If, the, if I believe, if, the instructor believes that they have done them safely and effectively. So that's kind of key, and that's a judgment with a good instructor. Um, student prerequisites, minimum of 18, um, 10 to 17 with written parental consent, which you would do anyway, and then a medical form. The medical form is on the folder. If they answer all no, that they're, they're in good physical shape. As an SDI instructor, I don't need to have them go for um, a further medical as BSA. Uh, but it would be certainly highly recommended to, to cover um, all of your bases as, as a Sea Scout or a BSA 
uh, leader. Okay, a required equipment. So any time you take a class, they would have to have the whatever manual, and that comes with your, your student kits, basically. Our student kits, we give them a full student kit, which will have their open water scuba manual. It comes with a log book. It comes with dive tables. It usually comes with a video, um, but some instructors don't want to do that if you're cutting costs, they, but they do have to have a scuba manual. Our shop requires snorkel mask and fins and booties. We consider that personal gear. You really wouldn't want to go somewhere and, and rely on something somewhere else and not have uh, equipment that fits you. A mask is, one, is your most important piece of gear that you can have anytime you're underwater. Confined water would be any pool-like conditions. So I've trained people in, in the Cayman Islands and we can do it off the beach because the water is what we would call gin clear. Um, so if it's crystal clear, you can do it there. You don't have to be in a swimming pool. So just so you know that confined water can be in swimming pool conditions. It has to have a bottom. It has to uh, be contained in some way. All dive um, instructors by our standards, eight students per instructor. So that might limit you. Do you need to, if you have lots of kids, do you need to limit it? Do you um, pick your upper level kids? That's going to be a decision um, that your unit has to make. Um, I want to go about equipment. So this is a photograph of me. Buoyancy compensators is the jacket that you wear and a scuba tank fits in the back. The regulator fits onto the, the valve of the tank and it comes in front. So as you can see in this photograph, I have a BC a tank and a regulator all attached and my fins are in my hand and my mask is in my other hand which you can't see uh, we were just doing an underwater cleanup but that's the equipment and usually uh, in our ship some of the kids are starting to purchase it some of it rented our shop gives a really incredible deal to sea scouts um, and almost free when we're doing um, community service work our dive shop uh, will will give it to the kids almost for free um, because we want to encourage them to dive. And now the kids are, love it so much that they're, they're getting BCs for Christmas, regulators for birthdays. And so now they're starting to, to get their own, what we call scuba kit together, and then they'll be ready to go. Um, our dive shop, if people want to buy wetsuits because the kids grow out of them, BCs and regulars, you're not going to grow out of necessarily. So we have a line of a kid might buy a wetsuit or buy a used wetsuit and then they they would return it to the shop we'd buy it back and then they would buy into the next size so we have a bunch of used stuff that kids can use at different ages through high school and parents aren't being burdened by the cost of continuing to buy wetsuits okay so confined water, you have to do an evaluation a 20 meter uh 200 meters and stuff it could also be done snorkel mask and fins. It's a little bit longer at that point. Survival, swim or float for tents. I do that first thing to see, I can really see um, where I need to, to, to focus on when I do a dive class. Just a few things that they'll, they'll do during a scuba, uh, uh, confined water. They'll get to use all the equipment. They'll put it together. They'll take it apart. Um, they'll do regulator clearing. Right now they're putting it back in their mouth and clearing it two different ways. They'll have to clear a snorkel two different ways. They have to take their mask off and clear it. Um, that's R and R's removal and replacement. They'll take their weight belt on and off and remove it and replacement underwater, under uh, above the water on the surface. Same thing with their buoyancy compensator. They'll have to take it off on the surface, put it back on, take it off on the bottom, and that's all just for gear from it familiarity, and um, so that they get more comfortable with the gear. After they do all their open water, there's more confined water, but I think you get the idea. And then open water, minimum of four dives, minimum of four dives. They have to be each 15 minutes on each dive minimum. And the reason why it's 15 minutes is because if you're diving, say if you're in the Puget Sound and it's 52 degree water, and these kids are diving in dry suits instead of wetsuits, uh, 15 minutes might be their their hypothermic tolerance okay their cold tolerance so then you'd have to do a couple you know probably two more dives to get that 80 minutes but they have to have a total of 80 minutes to get certified they're only allowed to go to 60 feet in the lake we basically only go to 30 feet because that's where our training se uh, section is we go usually from we go off the beach so it's from 20 from from zero to about 30 feet um, 
daylight hours only, and they have to fill out a logbook to prove that they've done those dives. Because if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. Okay, so let me just back up the truck here for a second. You have to then decide how you're gonna do this. The way that I have done it, I've done it a couple different ways. The first time I've done it with my Sea Scout ship, we did um, classrooms during the evenings and weekends we did uh, uh, confined water one weekend. And then the following week, we did more classroom and then we did our open water dives the second weekend. This last September, we did it two weekends. We did everything two weekends. So we did classroom, pool, classroom, pool, classroom, open water, open water. So we did it over two weekends. So whatever fits your schedule, um, that, so it worked for um, our pool facilities and our kids and it worked out great, okay? Your third meeting, we wanna introduce them to a land ship. If you're not very good at land ship, Sea Badge is a great place to really get your focus on, on land ships. So practicing a land ship, um, inducting new members, whatever, however you wanna do it, but that's a land ship with a good, good place to start. Uh, you, we, when we have new members, we certainly use our, our scripts. So if you can see that they were, I had the brand new members, yeah, they all had their scripts. That's cool too, don't, don't think that it has to be by memory. And then talk about safety the rest of your meeting. Uh, PF, PFD usage and uh, sizing, visual distress signals, that was at a safety at sea, so don't think you'd do that at your, your, your basic meeting. Um, uh, VHF distress procedures, um, that's my son. Last week we did, um, I did a boating class for junior lifeguards. My son's a lifeguard at, at the facility, so the, all my Sea Scouts help teach this class and so they like to be the visual aid people so he has every pfd that they had in the box my son put on um, even one that's not a pfd if you see that that buoyancy belt but the kids loved it because they were from 10 to 15 years old and goofing goofing around like you know that's the way to keep their attention all right your fourth meeting you remember you're still scuba diving in here so the other weekends or whatever you're scuba diving your fourth regular meeting, you can do boat handling. Uh, I give out handouts on parts of a sailboat and go through that. On runabouts, identify your sloop, catch, yawl, cutter, and schooner, because those are apprentice requirements. And use a heaving line if you want to take them out and air them out for a little bit, because I wouldn't do that inside unless you were in a gym. Um, land ship again, if your kids are done, this is a great way to kind of comb and everything. Do a land ship and have them get their certification cards on their land ship. Uh, these are some of my kids that got done in September. The weekend after we did this, we went out to, uh, we drove five hours to Ventura and got on a dive boat and did two days in um, Channel Islands. And uh, we had, uh, you'll see Boy's Life came out with a photographer and did a, uh, an article on us, which should be coming out uh, probably the next issue. These kids had a blast. We went from open water, we did our training dives in the lake, that's the lake behind them, and we went to the Channel Islands. Tomorrow, we leave tomorrow afternoon and we take some more Sea Scouts, we're going to the Channel Islands Thursday and Friday diving. So, um, it helps. So, by finishing Apprentice, the things that you can't do in the first month, they have to be participating in three months. Um, my Sea Scout ship right now is, is, is redefining their bylaws to say what active participation is because they're not really happy with some kids that show up for the fun stuff. So they're redefining that. So make sure that's in your, in your bylaws at the beginning. And they have to help with fundraisers and eight hours of community service. The reason why I put this photograph in here, um, Albert um, from Long Beach, he's the, the Commodore of the Long Beach base there. He made these up, these boards, he had a graphic designer make and I saw them and I said, I want them. So I paid a minimal cost to his graphic designer to change it and put our ship numbers on them. I took them to Walmart, I mean Walgreens, and they had a, a deal on printing posters. I made them it's in plastic frames and the kids get at every meeting, take little dots and put them under their name and what requirements they finished. The kids love these. Because every minute meeting now, they inside, instead of we have a box that has our folders in it, but this gives them a visual and they also gives them that kind of 
camaraderie plus hey look they got that done i want to get this done too so um albert um gira he's the guy i can give you that information if you want his name he's more than happy to share um stuff but it has all apprentice or ordinary able um and quartermaster really good stuff so what i want to leave you with is you want to keep the kids diving keep them active we do tons of stuff the favorite activity of all my kids is underwater pumpkin carving okay so this is one of they they did it when they snor they snorkeled and did it the first year before they were but they're certified so there they are on the bottom there's one of the kids doing it underwater that's the visibility we have in october so if they can do it you can do it we do underwater cleanups of the channel we we've helped the top one is um helping arizona game and fish clean up fish habitats that were broken um we do underwater easter egg hunts um, that's one of that's an er physician who comes out and dives with us our kids can dive every thursday with the dive club and every saturday morning the dive club dives so if the kids want to go diving and i can't go most of our dive club members are either certified leaders or ypt trained so they're instructors dive masters or ypt certified so they can take these kids diving it's it's an, a win-win for us make it fun uh the top right is the one on the top is our frozen fin dive we dive january 1st the water is 50 degrees three sea scouts came out this year to dive with the dive club um, more underwater cleanups we had an eagle project done of one of the local uh, launch ramps which the sea scouts dive the boy scouts and cub scouts clean the beach and, and the, the surface and the parking lot um, there's chewy again chewy goes with us everywhere let's see what else um other training i want you to think that that we just don't scuba dive if you're scuba diving other training once they get basic they can do advanced diver rescue diver everyone can do first aid and cpr i'm a real advocate of that oxygen administrations for scuba diving that's a key thing especially if you're older adults uh, that can help with uh, any other kind of problems we have hazardous weather is always a good one to take online so they can go back to myscouting.org and do that um, a NASBLAD approved boating course we do regardless you join you have to take that that's that's like step one for us and skippers club which the nasa say boating class now it's on the water training which we do and usually in january and this is our kids doing that and then the bottom ones the kids doing first aid which their favorite part is wrapping people up um, tying people up well you know gotta make it fun so there's some resources for you um, cscout.org of course has a new unit or organizational guide um, sdi patty now we all have websites they are all um, have mous with sea scouts now also diving alert network has um, that's dan.org or diving alert network there's the largest dive safety organization they also have an mou with us and the bottom one is the bsa scuba um, uh, manual that they have so if you want to take that and bring it to a dive shop or to an instructor and let them kind of just flip through it we cover everything in a basic class but then that way they can be signed off and and be able to then issue a bsa scuba or a merit badge for you also so um, and if anyone has any questions that's my information um, I am the Sea Scout Scuba Specialist. So if there's anything that you need from me, questions for me, um, you're stuck. You, I know most people in the industry and I can kind of help you out. So that's where we at. Thank you so much, Kathy. That was extremely uh, informative and also really neat to hear of everything that the heat wave does in Arizona. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please, you can type them into the Q&A. Uh, box right now and we can try answering them live and if you don't have any questions uh, we really appreciate your time this evening we have a webinar scheduled in september on september 12th that with a um, professional uh, who's helping us nationally with the best study which is one of the age appropriate guidelines for programs that uh, that we have a partner with uh, nationally to talk about generation z on how we can best 
uh, understand uh, the youth who are our customers because our, our Sea Scouts of today were born after 2002, which puts them into a brand new generation that we can learn what they value, how they respond to situations uh, because they are our customer base. Um, the question is, when is the next Sea Badge class you mentioned? And Kathy, uh, when is yours in Lake Tahoe that the Nevada Area Council is putting on? Uh, September, oh, sorry, October 18th through 20th. And if you want to know other ones, and then we have one um, in March in Long Beach, California, at the Sea Base there. Then in Monterey next October, Monterey, California. And then we're looking 2021 for probably Tucson and northern states, maybe Idaho in that area. So we're looking to really spread it around so we can get as many people into Sea Badge as we can. And also, depending on what part of the country that you are in, uh, be sure to check out seascout.org uh, where we have a complete list of upcoming Sea Badges. Um, uh, Kathy's a vice commodore in the Western region, so that's why her, her answers are on the Western <laughs> sorry, region. Western base, sorry. <laughs> so not knowing where you're from, we have them all over the country. So check out seascout.org for, for others uh, in, in case you live in another part. But the one in Tahoe should be a lot of fun and Tucson should also be a good time. So lots of good things coming up. So if there are no other questions, we just want to thank everyone for their time. Uh, don't hesitate to email. And if you have other ideas or you want to learn more about diving, please uh, shoot Kathy a note and we'll do what we can to help you. So with that, uh, today is the 107th birthday of Sea Scouts. They weren't doing diving in 1912 uh, like this. So, uh, you know, always look ahead. And uh, so again, happy birthday to our program. And thank you all for joining us this evening. Take thank care you. now.